Hello, Bitwig certified end user and professional DJ, Vic Vapor with you, and welcome to my Bitwig Studio 2.3 course. Before we get started, I just want to say if it's the first time you're visiting the Martini Lounge channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell and we'll see you inside. All right, welcome back. So we've got a uh, audio event uh, top loop added in here and we've got our MIDI and we've got a nice little groove going that we've worked with all the way to this point. So, but let's say we're not 100% satisfied with the top loop that we've uh, inserted in here. You know, we can hear that it's kind of stretching itself in a funky way because if you look down on the inspector, it shows that that loop is set at 128. Of course, our project is 121, so it's kind of playing a little bit slower than it should to actually be in time with the rest of the project. And we did monkey around a little bit with some of the um, stretching algorithms, but let's, how can we make this loop, I guess, more our own, you know, using these sounds? We like these sounds, but maybe we can just come up with a different or a little bit more creative pattern. So what we can do is we can right click on this clip and select Slice to Drum Machine. And I'll go ahead and do that now. And when I do that, you'll see that this menu comes up and it's given me some options. So one of the beauty uh, and nice features about using the collection loops that come within the uh, Bitwig supplied different collections and packs and stuff is they're already perfectly time stretched. So they're gonna slice in a very specific manner that's you know beneficial to us. If you have your own loops that maybe aren't time stretched or stretched in an appropriate way, you could see a little bit of different behavior with the slicing, but for the most part, you know, they should work fine. Just make sure that they're, you know, in time. So we've got bounce and slice and we got slice raw. I don't want to bounce and slice because that's going to maintain the stretching from the loop tempo of 128 down to the project tempo of 121. I don't want that. I want to keep the loop at 128, and then I want to slice it. So I'm going to select Slice Raw. Uh, eighth notes are fine. I have no problem with that. And it shows me now that it's going to create 16 slices. And I'll select OK. So now when that when it, when it happens, what you see instantly is it adds another um, channel for us right here. And it adds another clip for us as well. And right here in this clip, what we're seeing is all the um, notes sliced in exactly the order, I'm going to stretch that back out. I had it shortened earlier. Um, all the notes sliced and playing. So it should sound exactly like the top loop. So I'm going to solo it. And that's all the individual sounds playing exactly like they already are. And then you see the names of the sounds over here. So what that allows us is the creativity to go in here now and create our own rhythm out of those sounds and our own patterns out of those sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clip, highlight it, and just hit delete on my keyboard. And I'm going to double click. And now I've got a blank clip inserted, but I still have those sounds available to me that I can audition here. Or if I arm this track and use my MIDI controller, I can kind of go through an audition, or you can use your computer computer keyboard. And I want to mention that a few videos back, I got a little stumbled on the computer keyboard. I thought it was something to do with the push, because the push uh, two with Bitwig has a unique um, script. And I thought maybe the script was causing some conflict. But I want to clarify that now, in case there's anybody giving feedback, thinking I didn't know what I was doing. I discovered the fact that I should have just had the caps lock on. So, you know. Um, yeah, that's my point. I don't know what to say after that. Anyhow, caps lock on gives you the keyboard access to audition sounds. So caps lock, now I can audition sounds. Caps lock off, I'm back to my shortcuts and maneuvering around the interface. So we've got a blank clip in here and got no pattern of MIDI nodes and we've got all our sounds available to us. Now we just want to kind of create our own unique vibe out of those sounds that we sliced off of that top loop. So I'm going to play this clip up here and solo it and play it because it has the hi-hat pattern in it. And that'll give me an idea of what I want to match with my new sounds. So let me hit play on this one. 
Now I could live record these in or whatever, but I think for now I'm just going to kind of experiment a little bit and see what I get for a sound before I worry about dedicating anything. Let me pause everything. So let me let me show you also in the drum machine what's going on here because you may run into this and I'm more than likely to think you will. And by the way, as far as the drum machine goes, I'm going to put a somewhere in the video, my fingers are pointing wherever, I'm not sure how it's going to play out. But one of the corners will represent, I'll put a little tag up there to uh, link for a full in-depth tutorial I have um, on the Bitwig drum machine. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I'm not going to really uh, dive into it too deep here. I've already put together a really extensive course on it, and I'll put a link to, to that somewhere up around here. So anyhow, down here, what you'll see is each of our sounds that we've sliced into, if you open them up, if you click on them and open them up, they're in the sampler. And if I scroll down to the bottom of this bar right here, you see that bar pop up? Now I can actually zoom in and zoom out to each slice. So we're going to zoom into this guy. And you can see that sometimes they don't always start and end exactly where you want them to. Sometimes there'll be a little leftover sound. So you may have been hearing some sort of weird you know, sounds there, and that's probably what's going on, and it didn't quite slice exactly on the transient. But let's see if we can find a pattern that'll work for us here. I'm going to switch over to my pen tool, which is number three on the uh, keyboard. Now I've got my pen pen tool so I can just kind of draw in whatever I want. And I'm going to have to get rid of that. It's kind of annoying me. And I'm not really doing anything great here. I'm just listening to the sounds and listening to the rhythm, trying to create something unique and new out of those sounds that we sliced from the loop. So there's no uh, method to my madness other than just experimenting. And I'm using the arrow key to move the MIDI note around once I've got it in here. See where the sound fits. Let's say I don't like this particular MIDI note and I want to get rid of it. I've got a couple options here. I can leave it if I want to come back to it and I can just select mute on the inspector panel for that one particular note and it'll mute it out. Or while it's highlighted, I can actually hit um, option A on a Mac and that'll mute it as well. I think it's alt A on a PC, but again, don't quote me on those PC ones. I haven't been on a PC in years, so I'm, I'm a Mac boy. Um, so yeah. Anyhow, you've got the mute or the Alt-A there, or Option-A. Let's hear what that sounds like with the rest of our pattern now. Some of these sounds are a little too quiet for me. So let's go back. I'll hit one, go back to my pointer tool. And what I can do now is if you see this little guy down here, like a circle on a line, kind of looks like a somewhat like a key, that's going to open up my velocity and my expressions and things like that. So what I'm going to do is select these ones that are a little quiet here as a group. And I'm just going to bring up the volume a little bit for us. There, it helps them stand out a little bit. Now let's hear what that sounds like in the mix. So 
So there you go, slicing audio into the drum machine and kind of manipulating that slice and making it your own. So let's move on to the next uh, video.